Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. The truth the Most High is revealing in the awakening, many people will find offensive. The reason the messages are offensive, many do not understand. The indigenous people are indoctrinated with the serpent seed's delusion. Delusions such as Yeshua loving the world that he died to save the world. If that were true, the Most High would not be coming to judge the world with wrath. But because the idea of Yeshua saving the world make many people feel good, they accept the false doctrine. During Yahshua's time on earth, he pissed off many heathens and the Pharisees. The heathens were incredibly angry with Yahshua that they attempted to kill him multiple times. Yahshua said, I came to set a daughter against her mother, a son against his father, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Yahshua said, I did not come to bring peace on earth, but a sword. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foe shall be they of his own household. Yeshua said he did not come to bring peace on earth, yet many believe the false doctrine of Yeshua loving the world so much that he died to save it. Never mind that the scripture said, if you're a friend to the world, then you are an enemy to the Most High. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. The Most High is not coming to save the world. Open Diary is here to help you view the world in the Most High's perspective. If the messages from Open Diary piss you off, if the messages make you feel uncomfortable, good. The truth of the Most High's word are to penetrate your spirit to bring forth change. The scriptures reveal the words of the Most High are sharper than any double-edged sword. The truth of the Most High's words are meant to cut you. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Many mistake being cut by the words of the Most High for discrimination, racism, false doctrines, and many other negativity they associate with the Most High's method of informing and elevating His people. Remember, trials and tribulations are sometimes blessings in disguise. Look at it in this perspective. When a parent corrects his or her child, oftentimes the correction is not received by the child because the child do not understand. When the child matures and look back at what his or her parents did to keep them on the right path, they will appreciate their parents for what they did to help them stay on the right path. When the words of the Most High penetrate his people's spirits to begin the good work, many Israelites are rejecting the help because they do not understand. The good work does not feel good to them. In addition, what is being said does not match with what they see. You cannot decode what is spiritual with a carnal mind and living in the flesh. That seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. Many Israelites are living in denial. Many want to hide behind the curses. Many indigenous people allow the promise the Most High made of gathering his people and placing them back on the promised land disabled them from doing something about their conditions. Many want to complain about their situations but refuse to do anything to better their conditions. The doctrines the kingdom of darkness manipulate the indigenous people with is their downfall. Even in the awakening, the demonic doctrines are hunting Israelites down and destroying them. 
The scripture said the most highest people must worship him in spirit and in truth. Let me reemphasize truth. A time is coming and that time is now when the most high seek worshipers who would serve him in spirit and in truth. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth. For the father seeketh such to worship him. Many indigenous people do not comprehend spirit. The indigenous people confuse emotions with spirit. When you place your complete trust in the Most High, that is operating in the Spirit. When you operate in the Spirit, your only source is the Most High. The Most High said He would never leave us nor forsake us. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, He it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. The Most High said He is our provider. Today, corporations and business establishments owned by the seed of the fallen and workers of iniquity are requiring their employees to take the vaccine. If they do not take the vaccine, they cannot return to work. A person operating in the spirit will not take the vaccine because the Most High is their source. They would trust that the Most High would open another door for provision. A person operating in the flesh their job is their source. Without their job, they cannot live. They depend on their job for provision. If this is how you feel, then you have replaced the most high with your job. Your job is your God. Do not get upset when you are mistreated and the workers of iniquity demand you take a vaccine or get fired. There are many indigenous people that say they believe the most high and serve the most high, but their actions say otherwise. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. The story in the scriptures about the Most High parting the sea for his people to leave Mizraim is a phenomenal event that took place in history. A person operating in the spirit can see how the Most High has done this. A person operating in the spirit do not need to explore the seabed at the site of the event to find rusted war gear for confirmation. A person operating in the flesh needs evidence. When you present them with evidence, they will reject the evidence if it does not align with their belief. A person operating in the flesh needs evidence and it must cater to their emotions to accept. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. Thomas in the scriptures said to the disciples, unless he placed his hands on the side they pierced Yeshua, he would not believe. Thomas was operating in the flesh. Due to his carnal mind, he could not accept that Yeshua was alive until he had evidence. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. There is a difference between confirmation and evidence. Confirmation is when two or three people confirm what the Most High said to you. To qualify as a witness, a witness does not have prior knowledge of the conversation between you and the Most High or an individual. Evidence is more of, I must have proof to believe. The Most High said, Bless are those who have not seen, yet believe. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. To understand what is being presented to you from open diary, you must operate in the spirit. That is the only way you will understand what is presented to you through the messages. Israelites, regardless if you accept Satan have a seed or not, the seed of the serpent is alive and operating in this world. Satan run this world with his people and with the indigenous people who became one with the kingdom of darkness. The scriptures reveal Satan has deceived the whole world. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, 
and his angels were cast out with him. The deception is deeper than the nations coming together to cut us off from being a people and hiding our identity. When the sons of God, the fallen angels, procreated with the daughters of men, a new species of mankind was born. The seed that came from Adam and Eve is human. The offspring from Adam and Eve are the people that were made in the image of the Most High. They are the people the Most High breathed the breath of life into. What came from the fallen angels and the daughters of men are not human. Although the seed of the fallen are not human, they appear human, making them hybrids. The parable of the wheat and the tares revealed the Most High allowed the tares to live with the wheat. The reason Yah did not want to separate the tares from the wheat, if he removed the tares, some of the wheat would be destroyed while uprooting the tares. Yah said, let both grow together until the time of the harvest. When the end come, the angels of the Most High would gather the tares first to burn them. He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. The scriptures went on to explain who the wheats and the tares are. The wheats are the people of the Most High. The tares are the seed of the serpent. The scripture said Satan plant the tares among the wheat. This confirms Satan has a seed. The harvest is the end of the world. The reapers are the angels that will separate the wheats from the tares. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Caucasoid species are the only group of so-called people that went around the world planting their seed into the indigenous population. The indigenous people were dwelling in every land around the world. Today, the kingdom of darkness has blurred the line between the two species of people. Many tares are claiming to be indigenous. Because the kingdom of darkness has confused the so-called races, the indigenous people cannot discern between the two species of mankind. Therefore, the Most High allowed both to grow together. When the harvest come, the Most High will separate the tares from the wheat. The Book of Jubilees revealed when Noah prayed to have the seed of the fallen be destroyed from among his sons and their children. After Noah's prayer were heard, the spirit named Mastema asked the Most High to allow some of the seed of the fallen to remain on earth to judge men, because men were wicked. And the chief of the spirits, Mastema, came and said, Lord, Creator, let some of them remain before me, and let them hearken to my voice, and do all that I shall say unto them. For if some of them are not left to me, I shall not be able to execute the power of my will on the sons of men. For these are for corruption and leading astray before my judgment. For great is the wickedness of the sons of men. And he said, let the tenth part of them remain before him, and let nine parts descend into the place of condemnation. With the permission of the Most High, some of the Nephilim stayed under the control of the spirit called Mastema. I believe Mastema is Satan. The rest of the seed of the fallen were destroyed. The Most High locked down the angels that sinned in chains. These angels are waiting their judgment when the end comes. The Bible confirmed. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left to their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Israelites, that is how the seed of the fallen is found in many generations after the flood. You can read throughout the scriptures of the indigenous people facing giants. In King David's generation, the scripture talk about Goliath, a Nephilim whom David slew. King David and his men destroyed the children of the giants in Gath. These four were born to the giant in Gath, and fell by the hand of David, and by the hand of his servants. 
Before the Most High gave Esau the land of Seir for a possession, the scriptures revealed the Most High made the Edomites destroy the Horites from among them on Mount Seir. The Horites were members of the seed of the fallen, cave dwellers. The Edomites dwell on Mount Seir with the children of Seir before the war between the Edomites and the children of Seir. By the way, Mount Seir, before it became the land of Edom, it was inhabited with the children of Seir, and the children of Seir were Hamites. And Seir, the son of Hur, son of Hivi, son of Canaan, went and found a valley opposite to Mount Paran, and he built a city there, and he and his seven sons and his household dwell there. And he called the city which he built Seir, according to his name, that is the land of Seir unto this day. These are the families of the children of Ham, according to their languages and cities, when they were scattered to their countries after the tower. The seed of the fallen is still here. The beast system has grouped the different species of mankind into one. Concealing who they are and their origin is how the seed of the serpent is hiding among the indigenous population. Unclean spirits in the kingdom of darkness want to live undetected among you. One thing the kingdom of darkness do not engage in is boasting. The workers of iniquity work in secret. If a person is unaware that an unclean spirit is influencing their lives, how would he or she cast out the devil? A person could be tormented by unclean spirits and everyone dismiss the individual by labeling their condition as mental illness in this generation. Remember, by their fruits you would know them. The remains of the Nephilim giants that are found in our generation are kept secret by our governments. The Nehanthals are a part of the seed of the fallen. Today we have many people living among us with the Nehanthal DNA. Satan has done a phenomenal job of hiding the seed of the serpent in plain sight. The indigenous people accept and welcome the seed of the serpent into their families because they are not using discernment. Israelites, it is important to not allow the beast system to deceive you into believing the people that are favored by the beast system are the indigenous people we read of in the scriptures. Duality is one of the best methods used to deceive the indigenous people into giving the kingdom of darkness dominion on earth. Israelites, do not mistake the seed of the fallen for the indigenous people. Esau is a great example. Many Israelites believe Esau is the white man. The reason many Israelites believe Esau is the white man, the modern day Chittim or Romans that is presented to us by the beast system are Caucasian. In addition, the Caucasoid species are ruling with Satan. Just because the Caucasoid species are the default today, this does not conclude there are the same people the Bible speak of. Israelites, when you read the scriptures, do not picture the characters to be the Caucasoid species you see impersonating the indigenous people. For a long time, the indigenous people were deceived in religion to believe the Bible is about Caucasian people. The Bible is black culture and history. The kingdom of darkness has blinded the eyes of the indigenous people from seeing themselves in the scriptures. They wanted the indigenous people to view themselves as the slaves the Bible speak of to control the indigenous people. Esau, the Israelites, and all the other bloodlines in the scriptures are indigenous people. The population of the seed of the fallen during those days were not in the billions. The people of Chittim are descendants of Japheth. And the children of Chittim are the Romim who dwell in the valley of Canopia by the river Tabri. And the children of Dodanim are those who dwell in the cities of the Sea of Gihon in the land of Bordna. These are the families of the children of Japheth according to their cities and languages when they were scattered after the tower and they call their cities after their names and occurrences. And these are the names of all their cities according to their families which they built in those days after the tower. Japheth is a black man. The indigenous Japheth descendants still dwell in the land of the north. The beast system grouped the indigenous Japheth people with all black people and placed a slave label on them to make you believe that it was through the slave trade black people entered Europe and everywhere else the slave ship went. By the way, majority of the events that took place in the scriptures took place in Africa. 
Until this day, the African people are black with no Neanderthal DNA. Several generations later and under colonization, the original people are thriving. Africa is home to hundreds of tribes. Tribal people are careful of who they let enter their bloodline. Esau intermingled with indigenous people. The land of Seir was populated with Hamites. Seir is the name of Canaan's great-grandson. You can read this in the book of Jasher chapter 10. Noah's sons and their descendants called the city they built after their name. Israelites, just because you do not see a black person in power controlling the world, this does not conclude black people are not in power. The question is, what is happening behind the scenes? There are powerful leaders in the world and none of us have seen them on television. The media do not document their lives, yet whatever they say take place. Remember I told you the workers of iniquity operate behind the scenes and do their dirt behind closed doors. There are black presidents and black leaders in this world. There are powerful indigenous black people in this world. Majority of the powerful black leaders align themselves with the kingdom of darkness. They are ruling behind the scenes with the seat of the fallen. Secret societies are powerful because the members are unknown. It is all about perception. Just because the indigenous people are not running the world the way the seat of the fallen appear to be running the world, this does not mean the indigenous black people do not influence what is happening in this world. Nothing is trendy until black people make it trendy. Once black people approve, everyone else follow. If black people support you, you will be successful. Remember, Israelites, you're supposed to be a light to the world. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have but lost his savour, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out, and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Despite of what the kingdom of darkness does in this world, the Most High has the final say. Just because the scriptures say Satan is the God of this world, this does not mean he has absolute power. The Most High controls everything. Perception is important. Israelites, we are the only family the Most High know, and our Elohim has given his people his laws, statutes, and commandments. We must submit to the standards of the Most High. The heathens are people who do not follow the Elohim of Israel. Therefore, they're going to do what their flesh desire. The Israelites are commanded by the Most High to not marry the strange woman and men. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. The Israelites must obey the Most High, and the strangers who want to serve the Most High must adhere to the laws as well. The heathen nations did not break a covenant with the Most High. The curses many Israelites hide behind is on the rebellious Israelites, not on the other indigenous heathen nations. Just because an Israelite is not in power, this does not mean an indigenous person from another bloodline is not ruling behind the scenes. The seed of the fallen presented to us as the superior and majority are not the original people. They are imitators. The same could be said about the people that say they are Israelites and they are not, but of the synagogue of Satan. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are this synagogue of Satan. The scriptures in Revelation reveal they are the synagogue of Satan. The impostors that are claiming our heritage and bloodline, they are not us. The Israelite heritage has been hijacked by impostors. The real descendants of Jacob, who we are, remain indigenous, despite of captivity after captivity. Israelites, the original must survive for any bloodline to continue. If the original is no more, then the bloodline is cut off. The seed of the fallen need the original to survive. Recessive genes cannot produce the original. If the seed of the fallen is still here, then the indigenous people of every bloodline are here as well. Israelites, I hope you can finally separate the indigenous people from the serpent seed. 
Israelites, give the Most High an opportunity to teach you his truth. Do not be so quick to accept passed around doctrines of devils. Operate in the spirit and you will begin to see the Most High. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord.